Hello everyone, welcome back. So now we're talking about group problem solving. Yes, that's right, group problem solving. Now I know that you're probably at home when you're watching this, and if that's the case, there's probably not a group of people surrounding you. Who knows, maybe with your posse today, you have a large entourage of people who watch videos with you. Cool, tell them hi for me, and start working on this problem together. So what's the problem I'm asking? Well, we know that rod AB is rotating with angular velocity of 60 radians per second. That's pretty fast. And we want to find the velocity of the slider block C when theta is equal to 60 degrees and phi is equal to 45 degrees. Ooh, that's not going to be fun at all. But we can do this. It's just not necessarily fun. <laughs> so you and your posse, your entourage, your large assortment of yes people, whoever they are, maybe it's your mom and dad, um, go and try this problem together. Now, I want you to notice that rod AB rotates about a fixed point, which means we know what the velocity of B is relative to A. Um, so you just need to draw a kinematic diagram for BC and set up your vector equations. Now you've got theta to worry about here, you've got phi to worry about here, but I gave you some numbers for that, so it shouldn't be too terrible. Now go try it out, see how it goes, and I'll see you in a few seconds. So three, two, one. Okay, you paused, you tried it out, it was amazing, you did so much math that you like, the universe makes more sense to you now. Um, but now you're here. So let's do it together. So first off, we have to talk about link AB. Well, A is not moving, B is moving. And so, you know, our relative velocity equation is always the same, actually. It's just that if we say, okay, VB is equal to VA plus omega AB cross RAB, this just is zero. And so it simplifies down to this. So, because this is perpendicular, we don't even have to worry about any angles, um, but we still, um, so we can figure out what the magnitude of VB is very simply. It's going to be 60 radians per second times the length, which is going to be 0.3, and so that's 60 times 0.3, which would be 1.8, sorry, 18. Um, but that is not just pointing straight up or down, it is at an angle, and so we have to figure out what that angle is going to be. So if theta is equal to 60 degrees, we work it out, and we can solve and say, okay, well the velocity of b is going to be negative 9 in the i, and negative 15.59j. So you could have calculated what its magnitude was first, and then broke it up into components, or you can do the vector equation. I would prefer to make it, you know, just figure out the magnitude first and break that up into components, but do what you want. Now let's look at VC. We know what the direction of VB is. It's not easy to necessarily draw it, but just do your best. I mean, avoid straight lines because that will confuse you. And then figure out what the velocity of C is. Well, C is in this slot. It has to move up or down. So we're going to say that B is our stationary point. C is rotating around it. And we can go from there. So with this, we have expression for our angular velocity, for our position vector, and for both of our velocities. And so we can set up our equation for the velocity of C with respect to B. And so the velocity of C is going to be, sorry, I said velocity of C with respect to B, it's just the velocity of C with respect to our overall coordinate system. My bad. Um, so the velocity of C is going to be equal to, well, here's the velocity of B, which we already calculated. Then we have to do the cross product of our angular velocity, which we don't know, with our position vector, which we do know. And so we have our angular velocity in this. We take the cross product. And we equate the i and j components, being very, very careful. k cross i gave me positive j, but it was already negative, so it's negative value. k cross j gives me negative i, so it's negative already, so it becomes a positive value. That's why we have negative 9 here and positive right here. And we plug our numbers in, and we get that our angular velocity would be 21.2 radians per second, and our velocity at point C would be 24.6 meters per second going down. Going down. Okay, so that's it for this problem. It's the same process over and over and over again, so I hope this makes sense. I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.